The Pittsburgh Pirates are 18-8 and eight and head to the nation's capital of D.C. to take on the Washington Nationals for a three-game set. And albeit this might look like a series the Pirates should win, I'll, has, I'll be a little hesitant on it. And I'll tell you why I hear more on the Locked on Pirates podcast. You are Locked on Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team, every day. And welcome back to that Pirates podcast, everybody. My name is Ethan Smith, your host of the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates, every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app today and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off of your first order when you use the best ticket app out there. We'll talk about them a little bit more later, but man, you guys killed it with that episode yesterday. The Pittsburgh Pirates won the series against the Los Angeles Dodgers, winning nine of their last 10 games, and you can argue that they could have won 10 10 of their last 10 games if they would have not blown that 7-2 lead on Tuesday night. But as a final note to that series, it was very nice to see the Pirates have something like that happen. And you saw some reports about it that there was kind of a feeling of dejection in the clubhouse after that loss. And you really have to pride this team on the fact that they were able to come back from something like that, win the second game of the series and force a rubber match on Thursday, and then go out and really beat up Julio Arias, who for all intents and purposes has been one of the best pitchers in all of Major League Baseball since he uh, became a Major League pitcher. I believe they said on the broadcast yesterday that he has like a 2.89 ERA and the Pirates put up six runs against the guy in one six to two. So you can't complain about where the Pittsburgh Pirates are in any stretch of the imagination right now. They're 18 and eight. They still lead the National League record wise. And now they head to D.C. They take on a Washington Nationals team that On paper, this Pirates team is better than. That's what I will say. It is a team that the Pirates, for a lot of people going into this series, including myself, are expecting the Pirates to at least walk out of D.C. with two out of three. Now, there's an expectation there with how this team is playing, and it's a valid expectation to have. But when you put into consideration that this Washington Nationals team just actually took two out of three against the New York Mets, They're not playing bad baseball right now. I mean, they're 9-15, and which isn't the greatest record to have in the world whatsoever. But when you take a look at it and how they've played, I mean, they also took two out of three to the the Minnesota Twins the series before. So much like the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Washington Nationals right now are on a series win streak, which is something that's very interesting heading into this series. And the Pittsburgh Pirates, of course, are favored to win in this series. They had, um, by the way, Of course, they do head to D.C. for the first time this year. I believe this will be the only time this year. I think then the other series would be in Washington. Um, Right now, they are seventh in the National League in batting average. The Washington Nationals are at 249. Meanwhile, the uh, Pirates have a collective 360 ERA. So I think that's going to be a fun little thing to kind of gauge here with how the Washington Nationals want to attack this Pirates pitching, where we see Rich Hill today. We get Vince Velasquez on Saturday and then Johan Oviedo on Sunday. Um, and it's going to be interesting, too. Uh, right now, As far as what we're looking at as guys that we should be worried about going into the series, you guys know I did this last Friday with J.D. Haffron when we were talking about uh, kind of stuff that the – or not J.D. Haffron, uh, Jeff Carr and uh, Stephen Offenbaker when we were talking about players that Reds fans should be worried about and Pirates fans should be worried about about the Reds. Well, when you're looking at this Washington Nationals team, I mean, there's two guys that stand off of the page right now for them statistically, and that's Jaime Candelario and Joey Manessis. Joey Manessis, by the way, has been kind of this wild reclamation project that the Washington Nationals have right now where he's just done very well for himself. He's 15 for 45 with two doubles, a home run, and seven, uh, seven RBIs over the past 10 games. So Joey Manessis is playing some good baseball. Um, and right now, Jaime Candelario, he leads with four home runs and a slugging of 394. So he's playing good as well. Um, 
Kybert Ruiz right now leads the team batting average wise at 284. Uh, CJ Abrams, RBI leader at 13. Victor Robles leads on on base percentage, and of course Manessis leads in hits with the strong 10 games that he's had over the past couple of uh, week and a half. You look though at where the Nationals weaknesses and i think you immediately look to the pitching we take a look at these pitching matchups here of course we get rich hill versus chad cool tonight chad cool very familiar to pirates fans but he has taken kind of a nosedive in terms of what we would know as chad cool to be especially statistically he's uh pitched in 18 and one-thirds innings with a 7.36 era and a 1.75 whip i really expect the pirates to do some good against him tonight um Obviously, we saw Key Brian Hayes get the off day, so I expect him to go back into that leadoff spot. Uh, Brian Reynolds, I expect him to have another good series in Washington. We remember the crazy series that he had in Washington last year. And then you look at Saturday. Uh, Patrick Corbin is another guy who I believe is their highest paid player uh, right now in the Washington Nationals with a 5.88 ERA, a 1.69 whip, and 26 innings pitched. He'll face off against Vince Velasquez, who, of course, we know had a kind of rough start to things, but has since picked up very well. And then the pitching matchup that most intrigues me is Johan Oviedo versus Josiah Gray on Sunday. I'm very excited to see this one. Um, jo- uh, Johan Oviedo. He's been arguably the Pirates' most consistent and best starting pitcher so far this year. Josiah Gray, same deal. He's a 293 ERA guy, 1.34 whip. He uh, has 25 strikeouts and 10 walks to his name. He has given up four home runs this year. But him and uh, Oviedo actually have pretty comparable stats. Their whips are uh, kind of close. Their innings pits are only two apart. They uh, each are a hit apart. Uh, away from each other Oviedo has the advantage strikeout wise they both have the same amount of walks so Sunday I think is gonna be really fun for the pitching matchups but that's where I think these first two games of the series the Pirates do need to take advantage of what the Washington Nationals are placing in front of them with the pitching that we're going to see from Chad Cool and Patrick Corbin who are guys that obviously do not flash off the page but the Pirates have had some stints albeit playing good baseball they have had some moments this year where the offense has gone pretty quiet you saw it a lot in the Cincinnati Red Series obviously against much better pitching with Nick Lodolo and Hunter Green and even a Luis Sessa who played pretty good even though I don't believe in him being a starting pitcher and a Luke Weaver who had his uh, first start of the year that year. But the Pirates, for all intents and purposes, go into this series favored. They'll probably be favored in all three games because they're just playing that good of baseball. And statistically, I mean, it's it's interesting to see what the Pirates are going to do here. Uh, I The expectation, again, is two out of three. I think it's something that the Pirates fans need to get used to. And we'll talk a little bit more about this series and a little bit more about what has made the Pirates a good baseball team through these first 26 games of the season. And with the month of April coming to a close, we're also going to be talking with Gary Morgan on Monday to talk about our April players of the month, what the Pirates have done well over the entirety of this month and more. But before we get into that, we're going to talk more about game time. Game time, of course, will get you the best tickets you need at the last minute. Download the time app today and use the code locked on MLB for $20 off of your first purchase and buying tickets to your favorite events. Shouldn't be stressful. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off and download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Of course, you guys heard that on Monday we'll be with Gary talking about uh, the Washington Nationals uh, series and the recap of this series, as well as talking about the month of April as a broadened scope and talking about the week ahead, which features Tampa Bay. And I forget who they play after that. I want to say Colorado, but I might be wrong there. More on this series ahead, though. Uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates have done a lot of good things, clearly. They're 18-8. and eight. They've done a lot of good things. They've been playing good baseball. You can't knock them for that. 
you look at guys like Brian Reynolds, who started off very hot, kind of came down to uh, to earth a little bit, has since come back. You look at Key Brian Hayes, since he's moved into that leadoff spot, batting over 300 in the leadoff spot. You look at Andrew McCutcheon, who currently leads the team in home runs right now with five alongside Jack Sawinski and Brian Reynolds. You look at the RBI leaders for the Pittsburgh Pirates right now. You're looking at a guy like Brian Reynolds, Carlos Santana, Jack Sawinski, and Andrew McCutcheon, Rodolfo Castro, Connor Joe. You're seeing valuable stuff from this team that we have not seen in a very long time. It's something that the Pirates are not accustomed to. It's something us as Pirates fans are not accustomed to. It's something that we are just not used to right now with this Pirates team. And it's very nice that we know that the Pirates have this ability to go out and win games. And I think that's been the biggest reason why they've been so good this year is they're winning games in different ways. I keep saying that every show because I want to drill it into everybody's head. We've seen games where the pitching has had the quality starts, and right now the Pirates starting pitching currently leads all of Major League Baseball in quality starts with 16. And if you go back to 2022, they didn't have a quality start in the whole month of April last year. Now, albeit it was a very short month due to – um the extenuating circumstances of the collective bargaining agreement and the lockout, but still it it reigns true. And Mitch Keller had 13 quality starts to his credit last year. The pirates already have more than that as a team this year. And the, the relief pitching has been very good as well. You look at guys like Robert Stevenson, who's come back from injury and played pretty well. Colin Holderman outside of that Tuesday night appearance has done very well in terms of holding down the eighth inning. David Bednar is among the league leaders in saves right now because when he comes in, he's just electric. And it was nice to see him get into the game yesterday on Thursday uh, after not pitching until uh, or um, from Sunday until Thursday. So he did have some time off, but it was nice for him to get his feet under him because I think he's going to be important in this Washington National Series, and I think he's going to be very important in the Tampa Bay Race Series against a team that knows how to hit the baseball. They, I mean, you keep looking at the bullpen – One of the guys over the past week that's looked really good, especially against his former team, is Jose Hernandez. Jose Hernandez has looked like a very good option out of the bullpen. He's their lone left-handed option right now with Arlene Garcia still on the injured list. And he was their Rule 5 pick last year and was going to be more of a guy that they were going to stash and put in the moments where the Pirates are winning uh, a lot more than what we thought. And they put him into a high-level situation on Tuesday night, and he did good. He struck out two out of three against his former team. He can't knock that he came in yesterday did good as well in that game maybe jose hernandez continues to get an elevated role here as a left-handed pitcher out of the bullpen maybe they explore options with bringing up somebody else that's a left-handed option they don't have many but i'm sure they could figure it out but the bullpen and the starting pitching have been paramount to what the pirates have been doing right now because it's giving the offense chances to take early leads like we saw against the dodgers on um on yesterday's game when they go down 2 nothing early for Mitch Keller's start, and then all of a sudden they rip three runs in the first inning, and Mitch Keller shut things down for f- uh, five more innings, and the offense was able to pick him up in the sixth and go off and take a four-run lead. That's what you want from a team like the Pittsburgh Pirates, is you want them to be able to have games like this where the offense can back up the good starting pitching or the starting pitching can back up what's a sometimes lackluster offense. That's what you want to see from this team, and the improvements are abound. I mean – You're seeing stolen bases almost every game at this point. I mean, they have the MLB lead in stolen bases, so I am starting to call them the Pittsburgh Steelers, if you uh, catch my drift there. But they're stealing bases at will. They're doing hit and runs very well. They're using the sacrifice bunt and small ball to their advantage. They're using starting pitching to their advantage by pounding the zone, getting strikeouts, getting ground balls, using the defense behind them, which still needs some improvements, especially up the middle. But Key Brian Hayes has been arguably the best defensive third baseman and arguably the best defensive player in all of baseball this year. There's a lot of good things that are going right for this team. And going into this national series, that's what I'm going to pride most of this national series on is the small things that the Pirates have been doing right. Keep doing them right. Keep the small things the small things and let them win you baseball games. Because over the course of 162 games, The small things are what make good teams good teams and what make bad teams bad teams. And so far, the Pittsburgh Pirates are doing just what they need to do with the small things. Again, sack bunts with no outs from Jason DeLay. 
are getting you runs eventually with speedy guys like G1 Bay and some guys that are quick enough on their feet like Connor Joe to get over to third base on these sacrifice bunts and then score on a sacrifice fly in the outfield. It's the small things that are putting runs on the board for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And again, I said it the other day, and I think we have to say it again. A lot of credit goes to Oscar Marine and Andy Haynes right now for what this pitching staff has done and what the offense has done so far this year. There have been noticeable differences from what we saw last year from the offense and from the starting pitching. Now, obviously, things are subject to change. I've said it. I think they're going to hit a wall at some point. I don't know when it happens. And if they don't ever hit the wall, I will gladfully be wrong, guys. I will gladfully be wrong if they do not hit a wall. I'm fine with that. But at the end of the day, I think the biggest takeaway that we can have from the Pittsburgh Pirates and the start that they've had so far this year is the fact that so many different guys are contributing that we did not expect to contribute. Carlos Santana is a real player on this team. He was brought in to be that, and he has been that. Andrew McCutcheon was brought back for a feel-good story to sell tickets. I am not going to lie to you. That was what that move was. And... Since he's played very well, again, as I mentioned earlier, he's tied for the team lead in home runs and is doing a lot of good things. Key Brian Hayes is slowly but surely bringing that batting average up after a slow start. He sits at 229 now. Um, but you look at all the guys in their batting averages right now. Mark Mathias is batting 290. Um, Jason DeLay is batting 368. Connor Joe is batting 304. Sawinski is batting 276 with that power element that he has with over a 1,000 OPS. The guys are buzzing right now. That is all I can really say. And I also asked you guys to uh, drop some questions for me on Twitter uh, today just to talk about some things. And uh, John DeCarli, uh, DeCarlo actually asked, think the Bucks might be interested in Madison Bumgarner? I don't know uh, about that one too much. It, it's one of those things where Madison Bumgarner is a sexy name in Pittsburgh. It's not such a sexy name after 2014. He's been historically bad for the Arizona Diamondbacks over the past couple of years. I'm talking historically bad. Like, worst ERA in baseball over the last two seasons. Is there a reclamation project idea with Oscar Marine here? Yes, he's proven he can do it. He's done it with Rich Hill. He's done it with Vince Velasquez a little bit so far from what we've seen. He's done it with Jose Quintana and got Jose Quintana paid. He's done it with Tyler Anderson and got Tyler Anderson paid. So it's not something that if it happens, I would be increasingly mad about. But if he was to come in, I would personally want him as a bullpen op uh, option as a left-handed option, a long relief option, which is something the Pirates don't really have at the current moment. I mean, Dwayne Underwood Jr. kind of has been a long relief option. Will Crow as well, but Will Crow has not played well, and now he's on the uh, IL for 10 days. Chase the Young also has not played that well and is, I believe, also still on the IL. So lots to be interested here about what they want to do with the long relief option. We did just see them bring up Cody Bolton the other day, so that's another thing to keep in mind, but with the way the starting pitching is going right now, John, I just don't think that they need to really mess with it. I don't think that they need to bring in a guy like Madison Bumgarner for whatever reason they would justify with the starting pitching, as mentioned earlier, having a combined 3.20 ERA this year. Uh, I just, I don't see the point. I, I really don't. I just, I don't think they need to do it. Um, it's a, it's a nice thing to think about. Now, if it was June or July and they wanted a veteran arm in there with playoff experience and the Pirates are in this position still, sure, 100%. For the $720,000 price tag, sure, why not? What, I mean, at the worst, you just get rid of them. But right now, they have a good enough thing going to where I think they don't need to really add anything at this current moment. One, because they also have starting pitching options coming up eventually with Luis Ortiz and um, Omar Cruz and Osvaldo Beto and Mike Burrows was an option until he uh, sustained that injury. So it's there's a thought that they might be interested. I just really don't think it happens. And then we'll answer another question from Gary Morgan. Right before that, though, we're going to talk about Ultimate Baseball GM. Ultimate Pro Baseball GM is the best spot to have a franchise 
like game because it's the coolest game I've played in a long time. I've always thought I could be a great major league general manager. As it turns out, it's not all that easy. If you've had the same thought and have fantasized about managing your own franchise, go and download Pro Baseball GM now. The game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of a franchise, playing through seasons and leading your franchise and fans to glory as you build a historic dynasty. In the simulation, you're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, managing team finances, scouting and drafting players, managing through difficult personalities and injuries, and navigating your franchise through free agency and all the ups and downs of a season. All this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline, on the go, as you want and when you want to. So Locked On Pirates listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit ProBaseballGM.com. Scan the code or look it up on the app stores. That's ProBaseballGM.com. Ultimate Baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. Also, make sure you guys go check out the Locked On Steelers podcast with Christopher Carter. He'll be talking all about Broderick Jones and the selection by the Pittsburgh Steelers at pick 14 after trading up with the New England Patriots, as well as what the Steelers could do with the 32nd overall pick tonight as round two and three kick off. Are they going to trade down with a team that wants Will Levis, or what are they going to do? We'll see what they decide to do. Um, But a fun question from Gary Morgan here. I said, drop some comments and thoughts ahead of the National Series below. They'll be featured on the show today. I got two questions, one from um, John and one here from Gary. Gary's is much more of a loaded question. What's the last quote-unquote mistake you think Ben Sherrington has made? And as far as things are going right now, a lot of us have probably forgotten that since Ben Sherrington has come in, he's went 19-41. and 41. 61 and 101 and 62 and 100. Yeah, it's it's been all intents and purposes very bad. And he's had some trades that are very questionable. You look most recently, I would say, at the Clay Holmes trade. The Clay Holmes trade was a really bad trade for this team. It just didn't work out at all. The Will and the Josh Bell trade was another one that the Pirates just, I don't think, really got much from. Eddie Yeen is still an unknown. We'll see what he ends up deciding to turn into. And Will Crow was slated to be a starter. We saw him as a starter. It didn't work out. They've moved him to the bullpen since. He looked fine last year, but since he's not looked that great. Uh, the Jameis Italian trade, I think, has worked out great. The Joe Musgrove trade, I think, has worked out great. But if you're talking about his last big mistake and I'll add some comments here um, in terms of what some of you guys said and uh, Drizzy uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan and perfect said hindsight. I know, but the clay Holmes deal, as I just mentioned, uh, yeah, the clay Holmes deal was not good. And the Yankees, I mean, he's since come down to earth a little bit for the Yankees, but he was a very good relief pitcher for them in 2022. Um, the Adam Frazier trade has kind of been Okay. I mean, you look at Tucapito Marcano having an impact on this team. Um, He's done very well. And then Samson says, Blake Sable not being protected in the Rule 5. That is an interesting one, too, that a lot of people got very upset about. Uh, Now you look at the outfield construction, you can kind of see why. Uh, But Blake Sable can also play catcher. So that was another thing that a lot of people were kind of upset about with Blake Sable uh, heading to the San Francisco Giants via the Rule 5 draft. But... Point being made here that with the moves Ben Charrington has made in the past like six to eight months, you look that he moves on from Josh Van Meter and Yoshi Tsutsugo. Boom, that made everybody happy. Then you talk about trading Jose Quintana, which everybody expected to happen, by the way. And you get Malcolm Nunez, who is a potential future first base option for you at that position. And then a guy like Johan Oviedo, who the Cardinals could really use right now with the way their starting pitching has looked to begin the season. That trade has worked out very well. Then you look at uh, the acquisitions that he's made so far in the offseason that have panned out. G-Man Choi, albeit he's injured right now, was playing pretty well as a backup first baseman option to Carlos Santana, who was also another acquisition via free agency. You then look at Connor Joe, who they traded for. Connor Joe has been one of the better players on this baseball team. Jose Hernandez was a Rule 5 pick that they picked up, and he's looked pretty good in the little amount of time that we've seen him. Rich Hill and Vince Velasquez have given the Pirates some good quality starts to start the year. Ben Charrington 
has put together a team that he envisioned that appears to be good. And I compared this team the other day to the 2012 Pittsburgh Pirates team, that it's a glimpse into what 2024 is going to be, which is very good. And, um, and as I'm recording this, Nacho said when Tyler Heineman got DFA'd sarcasm, yeah, it's, you know, got to love Tyler Heineman. But then, of course, you look at Andrew McCutcheon as another deal that Ben Charrington was able to get done. And Andrew McCutcheon's impact on this team has been limitless. There, I mean, there's nothing else to say about the impact that he's had on this roster so far. So Ben Charrington has done great. And if the Pirates, again, moving closer to the trade deadline, are closer to being a contender than they are a pretender, maybe Ben Charrington makes that big trade that he's been waiting to make to actually bring in a lot of talent. And he's brought in a lot of talent, and we're starting to see a lot of his talent come to fruition. And some of that talent will be showcasing what it can do in Washington this weekend. Again, I'm predicting two out of three. I think the Pirates are going to win this series and continue their good ways. I think they're going to reach 20 wins before the end of the month of April. And I think it's going to be a fun weekend of baseball. Of course, we'll be tweeting about it throughout the weekend. But guys, make sure you follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked On Pirates. You can follow the podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Odyssey, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcast. My name is Ethan Smith. On Monday, we'll be with Gary Morgan talking about the whole month of April, the Washington National Series, and the week ahead. And then the week ahead to that, we'll be talking about the series that we have on tap for next week. Guys, have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Watch this show. Hit the like button. Subscribe. We're almost to 1,000 subscribers, by the way, so that's going to be really fun. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful Friday. And I will see you on the flip side.